And uh, so Pop Tech was generous enough to send out a video crew, uh, follow us at this new school for um, a couple days, and created this really cool three-minute video. So hopefully we get to see it. Um, um, so, so last year after Pop Tech was over, a couple days uh, after Pop Tech was over, um, I get a phone call from Andrew, and he says, uh, I just want to welcome you to the Pop Tech family. You know, once you join this family, you're always a part of this family. Now, um, I'm from Philly, and Philly, that means something different, right? Uh, I, get a, I get an image of uh, Andrew sitting behind the desk with a cigar, the guys from Frog standing ominously in the background, and I'm thinking, oh my god, what did I get myself into? Um, so needless to say, I'm really glad that I am a part of this family, and I'm a back again this year. Um, so, so what, do, what, what I've learned in the last 15 years of being an urban educator is that, as my kids would say, uh, the schools in cities are a hot mess, all right? Um, urban education is broken in this country. And um, I was really excited yesterday when I was listening to uh, the presentations. Uh, Puck and Wayne, hopefully you guys got to, to see their presentation. It was brilliant. Um, started to talk a little bit about this. We're ranked 23rd in math and 33rd in um, science in, the, in this world. And as they go through the kind of the whole, uh, their whole talk um, about the government and where we're headed, they land on this point. And they, and they I don't know if you caught this, it, it, of course it res resonated with me as an educator, but they, they, they come to a conclusion. What's the first thing we need to do? And um, so Puck and Wayne yesterday said, our first priority <laughs> must be education. I said, amen, brother. All right. Um, so, 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 uh, so why are schools broken? Why are schools not working? Well, a group of really, really brilliant people came up with this radical idea. And they decided, let's ask the kids, what's wrong with school? And, uh, and so this is the part where I get to give you a little quiz. <laughs> Um, but I want to try a new method that I learned about yesterday as well. So this is, requires you taking a risk. Um, before you take this risk, apparently if you put your arms behind your head, <laughs> lean back, put your feet up. No? Nobody? All right. Um, all right, we're going to try the risk anyway. So when kids are asked this question, what's wrong with school, on the count of three, let's, we're going to all yell the answer. See what comes to your mind. All right? One, two, three. It's boring. Oh my God, that was great. It's boring, right? So what's wrong with school? It's boring. It's boring. I don't know the last time you sat in a school building from 7.30 to 3.30 in desks and rows and go down the hall for 45. It's boring. And so the next question is really complex. Why is it boring, right? And I don't, I, I'm going to have to oversimplify it. There's libraries filled with, with research, and I don't want to discount that research. But if you get to the question about why do we get bored as human beings, I think it comes down to some very simple ideas. We are naturally curious. We are naturally creative. That's what we're programmed to do. That's the way we're programmed to be. And so, um, so when you think about that, and then think about how does school foster that, there's this huge gap, right? There's, there's wonderful teachers. There's absolutely wonderful teachers all over this country that in spite of school are able to get engaged students. But it shouldn't have to be in spite of school. It should be because of school. So um, actually, this, this next quote's not going to work because you didn't see the video. But uh, um, so, so in the video, hopefully we'll get to see it. Um, my student says this when, he, when he's talking about what's working and what's not working in education. He says, I don't learn best by being lectured in a classroom. A lot of students learn best by figuring out problems that are actually useful. And that's a really powerful idea. Last year, Azim, when he was on this stage, talked about the same thing. And um, one of my favorite quotes from Azim is, we want to learn critical thinking skills. Schools are supposed to be about that. People talk about critical thinking all the time. But he said you can't learn critical thinking skills without critical conditions. Schools have become about testing. And he, he goes on to say, if I, if I fail my test, who cares? I, I live, he didn't say this, but the subtext was, I live in the inner city. I have bigger problems than an F on a piece of paper given to me by a teacher, right? 
So it's, it's not only the kids that get this. We were really fortunate. And we got invited to the White House um, a little more than a year ago. And the, the, the president was giving a major speech on education. And he was using us as an example. And, and he goes on to say in the, uh, many nice things, and this was one of them that, that resonated with me, what they had talking about us was a program to challenge them to solve problems, work together to learn, build, and create. Right? The president of the United States gets it. Well, well, the guy that wrote the speech for him gets it, right? <laughs> but but the, the point is, is that it's obvious. It's obvious. And yet, we're stuck. We're obsessed with this idea of doing that type of creative work, but it has to fit in to 45 minutes of English, 45 minutes of math. Um, and that doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, and it's very clear to see that in the city. So, so uh, four of us, three, me and three other friends, decided let's start a school. And, um, and since I only have three minutes, that's like 10 hours talk of how do you get a school started. It's actually easier to build cars that get 100 miles per gallon than to start a school in, in an urban city. Um, but, but we decided to start a school, and we decided to base it on this idea that school should be about students solving real problems. Do you believe that kids can help solve the world's toughest problem and through doing so have a life-changing educational experience? Can we turn education upside down and start with that instead of this idea that we have to go through the school day in these chunks of artificial time? I believe absolutely yes. I believe we have to do that. Uh, our education system is in crisis, and we have to do it. And there's still some of you out there I know that are thinking, well, what about math, and what about English? And to that, this is what I would say. My students that have been building these awesome cars for the last 13 years and outperforming top universities and beating teams from all over the world have learned more through that process than any time during the school day in West Philly. And, and this is the other thing I want to make clear. Real projects that solve real problems don't have to be these cool, badass hybrid vehicles. What we found out yesterday is that they can even just be making a toaster. So <laughs> if it's hybrid cars or toasters or anything in between that taps into our curiosity and our creativity to solve real problems, that's what school needs to be about. So if you want to learn more a little about what we're doing, visit our website, and uh, hopefully we can roll the video. Thank you. My name is Melody Sutherland. I live in West Philadelphia with my mom and my two sisters. My mother nor my older sister graduated from high school. I will. what's going on in urban education, 50% of the kids drop out. And that statistic rolls off people's tongues really easy. For folks like myself that are on the front lines, these are children that you get to know and you feel responsible for. So this is much different than a traditional high school. The biggest difference is the school day is organized around doing projects. So project number one is a bicycle generator. Anybody I realized early on that students don't all learn the same and that this kind of traditional way of school might not necessarily work for everyone. Now put the voltmeter in those two holes. And so instead of lecturing for two or three hours, we decided to break them up into small groups and have them build things that had these technologies in them. This is all new to me. This is all new. I have never touched such a thing before. All we need is a screwdriver, right? This is the kind of stuff I enjoy. I like work with cool people and uh, mess with all this cool stuff. I get to mess with an RV car. Who does that? We believe that their ideas and their creativity can actually drive the school day. The body itself is carbon fiber, which is really light and strong. It has a top speed of about 150 miles per hour, and um, it gets about 100 miles per gallon. I don't like getting lectured in classrooms. That's not the best way I learn. 
you know, a lot of students learn best by, you know, actually working with their hands and figuring out problems that's actually useful. Okay, so the recycling, this goes to Melanie's brilliant question from a week ago. Where does the energy even come from? When I got here, when I realized we don't have a set schedule, period one, period two, period three, I'm like, I was kind of worried, like, this is going to be a disaster. But, like, I could see it in my head. Like, I could visualize it. But as time went on, I feel more comfortable, more open. It makes me feel happy that I see someone cares about our future. I feel like I can really be me here. To make the car make electricity, that energy is coming out of the gasoline. You know, it's, I think, very rare opportunity that human beings get to dream about a bigger vision and then actually get to be a part of carrying it out. So I feel uh, quite privileged to be in that position right now.